Almost everything you need to know about superheroes is wrapped up in one image. One single panel. You think you know which one? You might be surprised. Ready? I'm Andrea Gilroy, and this is Comics Crash Course. So, where do I start? Well, I'll start with history and context because uh, that's kind of my jam. So this image is from Action Comics number one. It's Superman and Lois Lane, the OG superhero. When it comes to superheroes, the actual definition of the genre is kind of tough to pin down, like comics. It's not that we don't know what superheroes are, it's that we do, but separating a superhero from a mythological figure, like Hercules or a folk hero like Zorro or Robin Hood, now that's where it gets tough. You could say it's about powers, but then there's exceptions. You could say it's about a costume or a dual identity, but then there's exceptions to that, too. But the superhero as we know it, this overdetermined genre that we know when we see, even if the particulars are hard, if not impossible to pin down, begins with Superman, who begins in Action Comics number 1, 1938, which this image is from. But actually, when it comes to superhero comics as a genre, I'm interested less in its definition and more in why something so entirely peculiar is so powerful. I mean, weirdly powered individuals in brightly colored costumes jumping around cities. That's, that's the thing that sticks. And sticks for 80 plus years. The symbol in this image, changed slightly through the years, has become one of the most recognizable symbols in the world. Now, the genre has shifted and changed. Sometimes supers are more and less popular, but since this moment, they've always been there, lurking in the corners of popular culture, consciousness, and sometimes coming to the fore. So what is it about these figures, about this genre, that gives it such staying power, such fascination? There are a lot of answers to this question, and here's what I think. They're all right. And like I said, they're all right here, in this first moment. Of course, I'll explain. So, the superhero is a genre of fantasy. First in the sense that such figures only exist beyond the realm of reality, but also in the sense that superheroes act as projections of our fantasies. Our hopes, our dreams, our wishes, who we want to be, how we want things to be. Now, because of their extraordinary power, and they're setting outside of the concepts of reality, superheroes get to act like we wish we could, to act out our deepest desires. And as I see it, that means that superheroes are essentially bundles of intense contradiction. Are superheroes fascists who enforce their will on others through violence? Or are they a radical vision encouraging us to be the best we can be? Yeah, both. So let's look at Superman. This image is weird. Is Superman a symbol of freedom from fear, or enforcing so-called freedom through fear? He's certainly in a dominating pose, but his point is to release Lois from her fear. She'd just been kidnapped by a bunch of thugs a moment before. It's understandable why she's afraid. He was very powerful, but he did save her. He's freed her and is letting her know. Still, the image is complicated. She looks afraid. And what happens if she doesn't listen? Well, he lets her go. He takes her home. That's what happens. Because superheroes are also about faith. We have faith that Superman is good, that he will do his best, because the fantasy of a superhero is a belief in the goodness of our heroes. Of course, that fantasy can be easily perverted and taken advantage of, especially in real life. We see it every day when charismatic leaders convince folks they have the best in mind, when really all they have in mind is their own profit and gain. So is Superman good? Or does allowing the fantasy of goodness only reinforce a dangerous trend in authoritarianism? So, let's think about power. Fantasies of power seem almost inevitably tied to violence. And that's certainly true of Superman. One of his powers from early on is that he's real strong. Is that always a bad thing, or is it okay when Superman destroys the car of mobsters to save the reporter in search of the truth? Does the fantastical nature of violence in superhero comics make it less problematic? A fantasy battle of good versus evil? Or is power achieved through violence always wrong? Or are some things actually worth fighting for, 
And do superheroes show us what those things are? You're probably going to guess my answer, right? Yes, yes, and yes. What about sex? I mean, this is kind of a charged image. Superman has rescue Lois, true, but only because Lois did what she damn well pleased. Lois is actually a really fascinating character, straight from the beginning. One who goes toe-to-toe, -to -toe, not just with Clark Kent, but with Superman himself. And if Superman is about truth and justice, Lois is right there with him from the very beginning. Always on the scene to get the story and report it to the public. Even if it means undermining her partner, getting in uh, the way of anybody and anything. Admittedly, there are stages in her history that are less empowering. But she remains a figure as powerful as Superman to this day. But when it comes to sex and superheroes, the conversation tends to be overwhelmingly about women superheroes, and especially their costumes. Now, I'm not going to argue that years of issues around representation mean that the image of a half-naked idealized male body has the same impact on the broader audience that a half-naked idealized female body does. One big part of that issue is who is doing the idealizing and what they are idealizing about. It's probably worth its own video, and there are lots of great resources discussing representation of female bodies in popular culture. What I want to talk about instead right now is how superheroes are as much a fantasy about sex as they are about power. All of them. Even the guys. I mean, a big part of the fantasy of superheroes comes from the wonder of watching powerful bodies performing impossible physical acts. Siegel and Schuster were open about part of their inspiration being strongman acts in the circus. When you add supervillains to the mix, you have two powerful bodies grappling with each other. And it's hard not to begin to think about the connections between sex and power and violence. Physical power has often been used as a way to display sexual prowess and vice versa, and everything from evolutionary biology to popular media. And when we add idealized, beautiful, powerful bodies in skin-tight suits to the mix, well, of course, as I mentioned in my discussion of the Comics Code, the sexual nature of superheroes was part of what concerned critics during the moral panic of the 1950s. Those jokes your friends might make about Batman and Robin or Wonder Woman have been happening since the 1940s. That is, right around the time of their creation. In other words, the superheroic image has been charged with sex and sexuality right since the beginning. And again, it's right here in the Superman image. And again, I'm picking Superman because he's the prototype. He's the first. But I think you could do this with any superhero, because it's baked into the genre. Wonder Woman's origin story literally has her sent to man's world to be a warrior for peace. And if we get into the really complex creation of Wonder Woman, Marston's ideas about feminism, women's empowerment, and their relationship with sexuality, well, you can see the contradictions build up there. And yet, it's not just Superman and Wonder Woman, it's a fantasy we see over and over again into the Silver Age and the Bronze Age, one that it seems to have gotten under our collective skin in slightly different iterations that just won't let go. Try the X-Men on for size. A new twist on the old idea, feared and hated by the world they're sworn to protect. The next evolution, but living in and fighting for a world that treats them like second-class citizens. Fighting us to save them from ourselves. Is this an empowering fantasy? Or is it insulting? I can see both ways. And at the risk of speaking in sweeping universals, I think this is because Human fantasy is itself a contradiction. We want to believe in good, but we find it boring. We find thrill and violence, but it repels us. We want power, but we want to be told what to do. We want to have our cake and eat it too. And somehow, in the figure of the superhero, we've managed to find the perfect cipher for all of these contradictions. I've spoken with a lot of folks, and going from my own experience, who've learned radical acceptance and what we might consider politically radical values through superhero comics. I also know folks who see really conservative and traditional values represented in superhero comics, things we might even consider retrograde and problematic, too. And I can see all of those readings, often in the same figures. Think of somebody like Captain America or the Fantastic Four, Wonder Woman, who I just mentioned, or the Hulk. And the funny thing is, I see almost all of that contradiction Almost all of the iterations of that contradiction bundled up in this very image from the very first superhero story that ever existed. 
I don't have a good answer to why superheroes work this way. What makes them so malleable? If I did, I imagine I'd be some sort of scholarly superstar. But it does fascinate me, and I hope it fascinates you, and to start digging a little further. See you soon.